Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Uh, Rolling our 16th year on the air, which is uh, hard for me to believe that I'm still around. Dang, you're getting uh, old. uh, now, there we go again. How many times have we said the word? We didn't even mention food yet. That's normally what we talk Wait. about. Yeah. I was trying to stay away from that. Now, I thought you'd bring us something. We got you Bill staying Cook- away from food? Uh, yeah. Well, Bill Cooksey back. We're going to call him back, <laughs> yes, Bill he Cooksey. And he's going in the diner, too. We're going to put his picture in the diner. I'll probably try to put you close to Wong in that picture okay. of him because that's it looks all right. that's okay. So uh, we look like brothers from another mother. That's that'll exactly. Make Ron right. look even better. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll make, we can try to do what we can with you too. Mm. So uh, really <laughs> enjoyed our conversation with young John Garrett. Uh, going twenty one years old, going to the Bassmaster Classic, and yep. uh, uh, that's pretty amazing. And then we're going to st- go from John. To a one man of his that, teammates. Yes, one of his Strike King teammates and a man that we've respected for a long, long time on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Out of Gainesville, Florida is our good friend, Shaw Grigsby. Good morning, Shaw. Good morning, guys. How are you? Let's talk fishing, buddy. I know it's uh, it's March, and uh, we haven't had winter yet, but I don't guess you ever worry about that. Well, Gainesville, <laughs> Gainesville get a little cool sometimes. I've been there. It's, so it's, y'all, are, y'all are going from the youngest angler in the classic to the oldest angler We didn't mention that. We didn't, we didn't we, say we that. We were not going to say that, and you said it right right off the bat. He said it and everything. But, uh, well, let's mention it. Yeah, I mean, uh, veteran is veteran. But uh, uh, this for you, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, – has your preparation changed over the years from the way you used to do it and 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 now? Shall I talk a little bit about well, the the the, yeah. uh, the aging process? In other words, so. well, you, you know, back in the in the early days, I would literally spend, and you know, it was always held summertime, and uh-huh. I, I would spend literally a week to two weeks of solid preparation. I'd make sure every hook was you know perfect on every crankbait and. And I, you know, every little thing, every detail would be taken care of. Well, now I just don't have that much time. Yeah. yeah. So my, my prep this year consists of three solid days, you know, from the time I can, you know, get up in the morning, you know, eight o'clock and, uh-huh. and then you start working until it gets dark and yeah. I'm in my, my boat building in my boat and I'm preparing tackle and preparing, you know, rods and reels. And yesterday I was organizing my boat and getting it ready and knowing that I have the right stuff for for conroe so you know it'll be a three-day prep where it used to be a two-week prep and i could spend a lot more time prepping but i just don't have that you yeah. don't, don't have the time and, and you know it's different today also isn't it shaw where back in the days you had to study maps before you ever went to a lake maps and now you just kind of <laughs> yeah turn your electronics on and go yeah you know uh that that aspect of it you know, it's kind of kind of been done for me. You know, in other words, I right. did that pre-fishing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the actual lake aspects uh, will come into play, you know, when I get there and we'll be practicing for a few days and that type of deal. Right. You know, right now, just classic prep is, is going to be tackle and equipment and making sure you have the right stuff. Then, yeah. then when you get there, fortunately, you know, the way they change the classic from the old days the old days you showed up and fished that's right Right. now we have a three-day practice period so i'll practice friday saturday and sunday prior to the classic which Uh is the same classic days friday saturday sunday of the next week right so so then i'll I'll practice friday saturday sunday then monday we'll go check in at the hotel tuesday's kind of orientation wednesday's the one official practice day yeah yeah. Then Thursday's press day, where I get to talk to you. Yeah, you'll talk <laughs> to me. I'll be Friday. there. Ron Wong will and be you there. Know I, hey, Friday, and you know, Saturday, I'll Sunday, see we you. have the classic. Yeah. But uh, I know that uh, you've, you've, you've been there. I mean, you've, uh, golly, I didn't realize that uh, you're over 33, 34 years in, in this business. Um, I know it's a long way back from what you used to do and things along that line, but I think your priorities are still basically the same, aren't they, Shaw? I mean, uh Absolutely. You, Absolutely. I mean, you know, you look at it, and the thing that you want to do every year is qualify for the Classic Yeah. because that gives you the opportunity 
to win the classic, which is your ultimate goal. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. You can't win it if you're not there and you've got to be there and you've got to work extra hard when you do it. And the older you get, the more you realize, I mean, there was a time in the nineties and two thousands where I was making it every year and, Yes. And, and one of those things, and it's just the type of deal where you now you realize, hey, you know, it's it doesn't come along every single year, so That's right. you want to maximize that that chance, that opportunity. Well, I know our good friend uh, Buck Gardner used to say in the duck call, and I think he went thirteen times to the world championship before he won. That's about right, thirteen times, and he went without winning. And then he won the world championship. Then he won the champion, the champion the next year. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking at you. It's your turn, Shaw. Okay, it's your well, turn. I, yeah. You know, and you look at guys like Roland that have never won it, and, yeah. and a number of just high profile great anglers. So it's one of those things that I don't know that you. It's ever your turn. There's no no <laughs> anything like that. You just have to work super hard. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> and have things work out and figure the right deal out. And so. You know, I'm just I'm there again, and I'm and I'm real happy to be there, and I'm excited to get that opportunity, and I can guarantee you, I will be working very hard. <laughs> I know that. How does uh, Conroe set yeah. up for you, Shaw? You know, I, I I think it's beautiful. It's perfect. It's springtime, you know, and uh-huh. and you know since since we moved the classic to the springtime, uh-huh. we've really only had one springtime tournament. The yeah. very first one they held it in Florida. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh-huh. Since then, it's been winter, winter. And, and it's just one of those things where I've never understood why bass would do that when they have the opportunity mm-hmm. to really have some amazing classics where you can just catch giant fish and yeah. huge stringers, and they run us to, <laughs> to, to the tundra. That's so, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm excited. This is the first springtime classic other than the very first one they had when they switched it you know which was at, at Kissimmee chain so right thank thank goodness and i'm excited about that yeah we would we, 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 i think we went to the long john era back there you know yeah. and then all of a sudden uh <laughs> with these type things uh they've, they've come into it again we're talking to our good friend Shaw Greasby about about his career and i know one thing you're still wearing that scripture on the back of your neck aren't you absolutely romans eight twenty eight. uh all things work for good for those that love Christ and are called according to the purpose. So it's it's pretty awesome. Well, I know uh, that solidifies you with me. I can tell you that and a lot of other your fans out there. And to represent Strike King, what is that? I mean, you, and I like to talk to these people. Uh, we just talked to young John Garrett, the youngest guy on the Strike King staff. I'm not going to get in the age again, but golly, uh, Strike King means a lot to you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, number one, they uh, they make the best baits out there. I mean that's that's just by far. You They're better incredible. say that. And yeah. You really don't have to look any farther than Strike King, and you've got what you need to catch fish. And I mean on a quality level. So, uh, but but really, the real reason I like it are are the folks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean John Barnes and every one of them that are there. Doug Miner. I mean I could just keep naming. Yes. You know Allen and just and, and Mark Copley, and they just keep going and going and going. Every single person, you know, Valerie Dixon, who I deal with, there is not a single <laughs> one that isn't top notch, wonderful people, people that you could hang out with, call your friends, and and just and know that they're as good as it gets. And yep. when you got people like that, you know, it's not it's not that corporate environment. Yes, it's mm-hmm. that 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 family environment, that love environment. And to me, that's more valuable than probably anything. Well, you know? I know that in. Uh... Uh, and Ron goes to that Strike King media event in September every year, and it's almost like a family reunion. Right, Ron right described me. Yeah, and yeah, I've, exactly. I've, I've been to it before, and uh, I'll never forget. I had a, uh, I did a radio show from there in one room. I must have had uh, uh, eighteen million dollars worth of fishermen coming through the room there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, man, this is this is cool. And Ron knows that too. No, uh, for that event. But uh, you know, Shaw, it takes a lot of support for you to do what you have to do. Oh yeah, and, and to do it at the level that you do it at. But you know, Triton boats, Sims products. Uh, and I can go on and on. And well, on. go on and on. Cause that's twenty five dollars each sponsor we mention here for, for Shaw. <laughs> Come on, keep going, Ron. You're on hey. the roll. <laughs> uh, what, what does that mean to you? And and 
you know, you go through a selection process, obviously, yeah. for the companies that, uh, that, that sponsor you. Um, what does it mean? Well, you know, we can't do this without them. In other words, the, the actual business model of the Elite Series in Bass is not a viable money-making business model. So for it to make money, you have to have a big stable of sponsors uh-huh. to, you know, to help you out. And so, you know, and, and thank goodness I have those guys, you know, like Triton and Mercury and, and Sims, you know, oh, my goodness, like you said, you know, we've had nothing but, but winter gear, long guy gear tournaments. Right. And, of course, we were up at Cherokee. If it wasn't for Sims, I'd have been frozen like a popsicle. <laughs> you know? and, and, um, yeah. and, and, and so, you know, you, but you have all these sponsors – uh, you know, and Strike King and, and Motor Guide, and I just keep naming all of them. These guys um, are the ones that keep you fishing and allow you to fish. Because without it, um, most of the anglers, even quality anglers, would be going in the hole. So uh, because of that, that business model. So people think, you know, that all oh, these pros make so much money. Well, there's probably... You know, yeah. 10 guys that do really well. Yeah. And yeah. then there's a number of guys that kind of do okay. And then there's a bunch of guys that lose a bunch of money. So yeah. the bottom line is, is, uh, without those guys, we're not fishing. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And they are the greatest companies. And we appreciate each and every one of them that puts back into the sport. So yes. they're yeah. not in there just to take money from the sport. Yes, they're a business and they have to make money. But they make money, and they give a lot of it back. And to me, that's really special. When you look at it that way, that these guys support the anglers and help them yeah. out and keep them fishing and, you know, Seaguar fishing line and, and you know, Odyssey batteries. I mean, I, be, I just keep going on keep and going. on and on and on on the, on the people that keep me out there fishing. Well, let me ask you before we let you go, just got a couple of minutes here. Uh, uh, we've mentioned that age. Uh, a lot of folks uh, just don't make it this long. I got to ask you real quickly: uh, uh, Is the competitive fire still there, Shaw? Are you still uh, got that burn? I mean, you, you, thirty-four years is a long time at this business. It takes it takes parts of your body, takes your mentally away, and everything. How how do you feel physically and mentally as you go into this thirty-fourth uh, year uh, as a pro? Well, you know, I, I still have that fire. I there you love go. the competition. I love getting out there and catching them. I get very depressed when I don't catch them, but, you know, that's part of life. So yeah. You deal with it, but uh, it's very motivating when you don't. Um, so, no, I don't think anything's changed. I, I mean, the greatest thing about our sport is that fish has no clue if you're, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, two or three it. years old or if yeah. you're, you're 80. You know uh-huh. what I mean? That's and right. One, one, one last year at, at almost 70, 69. And nine I was waiting for you to say that. that. That's what I – because I looked at that, and I know uh, I've seen the – I think I saw the video of you uh, saying if you, one guy you'd like to be in the boat would be Rick Clun. Uh, I've been in a practice round with Rick, and that was that was mentally straining enough right there, <laughs> you know. So I can't imagine other things. Hey, we got to go, Shaw. Thank you, buddy. Uh, you know we don't. I don't believe in luck. Uh, I believe in going after them, and uh, we just hope you have a great tournament. And uh, thanks for taking time to be with us. And uh, look out for Ron Wong down there. He'll be the one of the eighteen thousand Wongs at the tournament. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> look out for him, Guys, buddy. Thanks for having me. All on. right, we'll talk to you have again. All back. right, let's take a break. Go to outdoors with Larry Ray. And come back and talk some more. Fishing, but a different style on the radio. You can find 